You probably know that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. But where did he write the speech? Where did he go afterwards? And what's buried here that will ensure that future generations will remember King's legacy? Today we'll show you the places in D.C. Dr. King went before, during, and after giving one of the best speeches of all time. A speech that wasn't even supposed to happen in the first place. Before the March on Washington, Dr. Martin Luther King had a satellite office here and so he would occasionally eat at our next stop, which is a DC landmark. You know you're at a good local place when the line is long. Ben's Chili Bowl is an iconic restaurant in D.C. that has been here for over 60 years. It's a black-owned business that has served famous patrons such as Barack Obama, John Lewis, and Martin Luther King Jr. Most people come here for the half smoke, which is like a hot dog but bigger and spicier. It's really cool to eat at such a D.C. landmark, but also to think about like Martin Luther King Jr. just eating here like everyone else. And actually, in 1963, when he came here every now and then, he actually got to know the owners, Ben and Virginia Ali. Oh my god, Virginia Ali, the original owner, she just walked by. So I'm going to shoot my shot <laughs> and see if she can talk to us about when MLK was here. We're um, filming a vlog about all the places Martin Luther King has been to when he was in D.C. And I know that he went here a few times. Could you explain a little bit what that was like? She said that Dr. King was telling them when he would come here that leading up to the march, he met with President Kennedy and Kennedy was like, you know, I don't really think it's a good idea for you to have this march because if it's violent, it could really set your movement back. And King just looked at him and he was like, there won't be any incidents. And he was right. She's so popular, people are literally lining up to take pictures with her. So where did Dr. Keen write his I Have a Dream speech? Let's find out. Right before the March on Washington, King sat in the lobby with a group of advisors making edits to his I Have a Dream speech. King later went up to his room and finished the outline by himself, and apparently he finished it around midnight and then wrote the speech through the morning. According to his advisors, he finished the speech around 4 a.m., but one thing to note is it did not have any mention at all of I Have a Dream. Everyone's here having this really fancy afternoon tea time session and there's someone playing a harp and we're just trying to find this exhibit that explains the history of the Willer so we can try to figure out where Dr. King stayed, like what specific room he was in when he was at the Willard. We got excited because we saw that, that there was a little snippet about the I Have a Dream speech and MLK, but there's no information about him actually staying here and what room number he was in. That was what we wanted to figure out. Yeah. But regardless, when you walk through the lobby, it's just really hard to imagine that Dr. King is sitting there speaking to his advisors, writing the biggest speech of his lifetime right in the lobby that we were sitting. The more I think about it, the more I'm realizing Dr. King did pretty much everything your teachers tell you not to do before a big test or an event. Like he procrastinated, he stayed up all night, he didn't get a lot of sleep. So pretty much everything you're not really supposed to do. <laughs> I didn't realize Dr. King and I have a lot in common because that's how I would craft my speeches in college. I would be finishing them up at 4 a.m. the morning of. <laughs> The March on Washington was not what anyone was expecting. It was nonviolent, 
A hundred thousand more people showed up than what was expected, and the biggest speech given that day was partially improvised. On August 28, 1963, the march began with a rally at the Washington Monument, then ended at the Lincoln Memorial. Right behind me is where MLK gave his speech. He was originally scheduled to speak for four minutes, but he ended up speaking for 16 mostly because he went off script. The reason why the original draft of the speech did not include I Have a Dream is because it was something that King had used multiple times in previous speeches and his advisors were kind of like, oh, it's cliche at this point. You might not want to include it. And he wasn't planning on it. And then when he came here and gave the speech, he said something just came over him and he completely went off script and improvised more than half of the speech. I'm actually kind of like having a moment right now because I'm just thinking about the day of the March on Washington. The event here at the Lincoln Memorial was like three hours long and then all of a sudden Dr. King comes out and just has this amazing speech and I'm just envisioning 250,000 people covering the mall. It's actually a little bit hard to conceive in my head. If you want to see some photos from the March on Washington, you can check them out at the exhibit that's under the Lincoln Memorial. So after barely getting any sleep, speaking to hundreds of thousands of people, he still had to meet the president afterwards. If you ever wonder what it's like just to try to get a quick photo of the White House, here you go. How intimidating is this? After the march, all of the leaders met with President Kennedy and Vice President Johnson to discuss their list of demands and just overall civil rights legislation. And it was all secretly recorded, which we'll put the link in the video description for you. Thanks to leaders like MLK, the march helped to pressure lawmakers to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Over a year later, Dr. King returned to the White House to witness President Lyndon B. Johnson signing the Civil Rights Act into law. Just casual White House interns walking around, you know. Do you see things? Now we're on the hunt for a time capsule that's buried here in DC. This is harder to find than we thought because of all of these people skateboarding. Okay, I'm standing on top of Martin Luther King's time capsule. It's the Martin Luther King Jr. Federal Holiday Commission time capsule. It was planted in 1988, and apparently it includes one of his Bibles, some robes that he wore when he was a preacher, as well as some audio clippings of some of his speeches. I'm not sure how the technology um, is going to work out because the time capsule is supposed to be open in 2088, so I'm not exactly sure how the audio technology is gonna match up from 1988 to 2088, but it's a thought that counts. Freedom Plaza was named after MLK's I Have a Dream speech. Since this is basically like a quasi skate park, I wonder if all these people skating here know that they're skating above a time capsule. <laughs> Probably not. We've lived in Virginia for a long time and it gets to a point where you kind of take DC and the monuments here for granted. You don't really pause and think like how much history can be contained in just one location. This is why I love living near DC. I'm so glad we decided to take a little MLK tour because it just gives a different perspective to the buildings. Makes you realize that a lot of these locations really did have a front row seat to a very historic moment in our nation's history. If you've been to one of these places and you didn't know about its relationship with MLK or if you just learned something, feel free to comment below and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. So after burial, right sack of night. You know, I was thinking. <laughs> Guess I wasn't thinking.